What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. I am The Hobbyist and today we're going to be installing the electronics in the Axial SCX-10-3 build. Uh, as you saw in previous videos, I put the motor and servo in when the instructions called for it and then I threw in the receiver just to make sure it fit. But now I've got mini servos right here and the electronic speed controller all ready to go. So it's time to get these things installed. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So to start off, I want to get the ESC set up. So this is a Hobbywing 1080 ESC. I haven't powered it on, but I have put on some connectors. So I want to get this plugged into the receiver, make sure everything is working, and get this program before I put in the mini servos. So I've got a battery here. This is a Helios RC 3500 mAh 3S LiPo battery. So we're just kind of stick it in there. And then plug the ESC in and we're gonna have to calibrate it. Now, calibrating these ESCs are quite simple. All you have to do is hold the set button while powering it on, and then you're gonna hear a series of beeps where you're gonna hold full throttle, full brake, and neutral. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so to calibrate the ESC, it's super simple. Hold the set button down and press the on-off switch. Now, hold neutral and click set, then hold full throttle, click set, then hold full reverse, click set. And it's all calibrated now. So you should have steering working very nicely and the throttle should work. And it does. All right, so now I'm gonna get this ESC kind of stuck together and get you know the wire sorted out and then I'll figure out where I'm going from there. Okay, so I've got the ESC kind of just temporarily, you know, stuck on. And this is about where I'm gonna keep it. So now my plan is to run these wires, perfectly not entangling them, run these wires underneath the transmission and then through the motor wires because I've also got the scale engine cover that's gonna go on here. And so, you know, running wires is gonna be a little bit tricky, but that's, plan as of right now is to just kind of wire it under and we'll see where it goes. Okay, so I kind of got the wires routed underneath nicely now. I guess we'll have to see if the engine cover will still fit. I'm hoping it will. And it looks like if we push it down a little bit, everything should be okay. And I'll make sure that it's not rubbing on the drive shaft, but I'll get this installed and then I'll show you what it looks like underneath. Okay, so I've got the ESC wires and motor wires connected and it kind of routes underneath the transmission and I've kind of just used zip ties to route it around any moving parts and it goes up into the motor and thankfully there's been plenty of room left over for me to put on the scale engine so that now fits in it looks pretty clean. Alright, now that the ESC has been wired up, it's time to program this. Now, if you guys already know how to program a 1080 ESC, then you might as well skip over this step. But for those of you that don't, every time you buy a 1080 ESC, you almost always get this LED program card. And it's very simple to use. First, you need to turn on your radio and plug in the ESC. Then, before you turn on the ESC, plug the wires in accordingly and make sure that you have the other end plugged into the uh, port that has three symbols on it and not two and then turn it on. You will see the LEDs light up like so. So real quick I'm going to go through the settings. Item one is running mode. Now stock it comes in forward brake. For a crawler we want it in forward reverse. So we're going to go to value, go to number three which is forward and reverse because you want that instant reverse and then click OK. Then we're gonna press item for the next mode. It's already, it's currently set in LiPo mode, which is exactly what we want. So we can skip over that one. Next one, low voltage cutoff. It's currently set at three, which is medium. Medium low voltage cutoff is just fine for my use because crawlers can have crazy battery life as is. Next, running mode four, that's initial start force. And for a crawler, you probably want that to be at item number one which is zero because you want crawlers to have a very smooth startup you don't want to have like extreme punch 
Next, max forward force, it's currently set at 100%, which is perfect. Next, now you have to kind of go on the back here. Max reverse force, currently set to two, which is 50%. I'm gonna up that to 100%, and then I can go in later if I need to and change things. Next, item number seven, which is max brake force, and it is currently set to nine, which is fine. Item number eight, which is initial brake force, it's currently set to one, again, just fine. Item number nine, drag brake. Now for crawlers, a drag brake is a very handy tool to have. Now it's currently set to nine, which is maximum drag brake. And I want to let that come down a little bit. So I'm gonna bring it down to 50% drag brake force, which is seven. So we're gonna go to seven, click okay. Move on to item number 10 which is drag brake rate, that's how much force will be applied. It's currently set at four, I'm gonna just up it up to six. You know, kind of higher than normal. Item 11, neutral range. I want neutral range to be extremely low, so we're gonna set that to number one. Item number 12 is start mode, which and that's punch, and so you kinda want that at level nine so that if you gun it, then it's gonna have maximum power. So, that's start mode. Item number 13, PWM frequency. This changes kind of the pitch that your motor winds at. 16 will make it the quietest, which is what I'm gonna do. All right, number 14, BEC voltage. It can either be at six volts or 7.4 volts. Stock, it comes at six volts. And since I'm going to be running micro servos that can only take six volts, I'm only going to run six volts, even though my steering servo is high voltage compatible. Finally, number 15 is freewheeling. Now, for those of you that don't know what freewheeling is, it is basically if your vehicle is on a downslope, then freewheeling will kind of gradually apply the drag brake and slowly let your vehicle go down the hill. So I want that to be on, so I'm going to set it to number one. Once You've got all your programming done. Just turn off your ESC and unplug it, and your ESC is all programmed. So, now that that's done, it's time to get to work on the micro servos. Now, I'm going to be using the recommended Spectrum SX107 servos, mainly because they are the only ones that come with the other half of the servo saver, this piece here. And I want to have the servo savers on these because I do hear that they this shifting action can be a little bit rough on mini servos, but I've also heard that with the right endpoint set, then they'll be just fine. So I have gone into my radio, which is a Spectrum DX5C, and I have created settings for auxiliary one and auxiliary two for these micro servos, and I've got them connected to these switches here. So what I'm gonna start off by doing is just plug them in and get them centered. Okay, so white wire goes in towards this. Now auxiliary one, I've got programmed to be the two-speed servo. So let's see if everything works. And it does not. Oh, might help if I turned on the vehicle. Now, all right, so that must be first, that's second. All right, so that servo works just fine. Now, the second servo, and if you're wondering what these are, these are my shortest wire extensions that I could find because for some reason, Horizon made the wires extremely short on these servos, and it just kind of makes it difficult. Oh, I heard it move. All right, let's see if the dig servo works just fine. Yep. Very good. Okay, so now I want to turn both of everything off and then turn it back on to see where these things start at standard. Okay, so the dig servo starts in digged form, it looks like. So that might need to be reversed later, but this two speed servo comes out just fine. So what I'm gonna first do is get the servo horns connected and I'll go from there. All right, so I've got the servo saver and servo horn in, I've got the servo screwed in, and I've got the endpoints set. So now I can go into second, 
or first without there being any servo strain and that should help my servo last as long as possible. So as you can see, I've just got it connected to this switch here, which is E and it works as expected. So now it's time to figure out the dig servo, which is this one here. Now I've got it connected to F and as you can see, works just fine. So I need to get that one installed, but this one's gonna be a little bit harder because I gotta put the servo horn on before I screw it in. Otherwise, it's not really gonna work very well. So I'll figure that out and then I'll put you guys back on. Quick thing I wanted to show you guys how to assemble these servo horns. So first you put the servo saver on top, followed by this horn piece, make sure it all kind of lines up. Then you follow it with the spring, which helps, you know, that's how the servo saver kind of works. And then this thing with the little ridge facing in towards the spring. And you just kind of combine them all like that and that's what creates the servo saver. Okay, now that I've got the dig servo hooked up and connected, it should all work just fine. It does, I've got the servo saver tuned. So, here, lift it up. And I might actually have to adjust the servo saver a little bit because that's maximum power one way and minimum power the other way. Um, the shifter servo is okay. The shifter servo works just fine, but the dig servo may need a little bit of work, but we'll see. Let's see here, if I put it into dig, oh no, looks like it works just fine. So yep, so that is how you get the servos connected. So now it's time for me to kind of just clean up these wires and make it all look nice. All right, so I've just finished putting in the receiver box and now every all the wires are cleaned up. A little bit of a mess right in here, but there's not everything that you can do. But anyway, all the electronics are now in. ESC is tuned, motor is running very nicely. The steering have the endpoints set. Uh, I did notice the tires are maybe a little bit wonky, but I think part of that is just, you know, how the foams are situated. So if yours is kind of doing that, then be sure to just kind of mess around with them a little bit and it should be just fine. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a com comment in the section below for what videos you'd like to see next. But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.